I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I'm JT Timmons. Thought you were Schnookums. Oh well, I'm schno- well, yeah, well, <laughs> Mad Schnookums. Mad Schnookums. Mad Schnookums. <laughs> Just jump into the episode. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well welcome back, y'all. Uh, we're bringing it back to Savannah today. It's been a while since we've talked about Savannah's ghosts, um, so we're going to talk about. Haunted restaurants. And Places seven. you can eat with a ghost. With a ghost. Yes. And there's a lot of them in town. Um, That's true. There's a lot of them. We chose three out of, you know, a hundred. So. Basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, th- honestly, this could be a series in itself. Uh, just because it's like there are places like the Fitzroy. There are places like the uh, 45 Bistro in the Marshall And since House, we've already spoken about um, a Moon River... Uh, we've already spoken about uh, 1790, which uh, 1790 has a restaurant in it. Um, the Marshall House has a restaurant mm-hmm. in it. Uh-huh. So there are plenty of places where you can get your ghost on and your grub on at the yes. same time. Um, but uh-huh. yes, before we get into that, though, one quick announcement. Um, I'm sure you're all tired of hearing me talk about it. But for those of you who do not know already, we are going to Waverly Hills on April 24th. <laughs> There will be dead people and tuberculosis stories, and there will be oh, body yeah. shoots and Yay. all the good things. All the things you want to see in a haunted location. Yes. And it's a large haunted location. Very. Ginormous, big building full of ghosty ghosts. Yes, and we'll uh-huh. be bringing the Ghost Brothers with us. Um, so as you all know from our Conjuring adventures with them, they're really fun, and they bring great energy to the investigation. Absolutely. So we're very excited we uh, to be collaborating with them again. Although at the size of the Waverly Hills place, we may not see a lot of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we'll just be wondering, hey! Hello! 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 hello. But, yes, yeah, so we're going to be doing that. Um, but we highly recommend that if you are really wanting to dive in with us, join us over on Patreon, uh, because we are going to be live streaming the whole time, as long as service is permitting. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, as we found out with The Conjuring House, sometimes even in small spaces, Wi-Fi doesn't always uh, work. And so we have- Doesn't ha- penetrate the ground, apparently. <laughs> apparently, uh, because we were having hard times with that cellar. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, but as long as we can, uh, we are going to be live streaming and we're probably going to try out some different things where we're going to leave you guys alone in a room for a yeah, little bit of maybe time. Maybe with a running spirit That's box. That's going to be so cool. Yeah. I'm so lit for that. Yeah. Like just just leaving the live stream alone just so people can like watch and see what's up with it. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna do some fun new things with that. Um, yes, we are. And it's really fun to have the para junkies along with us when we're doing these investigations because it's interesting to hear their insight while we're doing it actively because sometimes they catch things that we're not actively catching Uh um so it's it's very fun um so if you're interested in things like that check us out over on patreon um obviously along with that you have access to all the other fun exclusive content that we made from the conjuring house and then also the laundry list of a library of all the other episodes we have done 360 Um, videos 360 videos all sorts of crazy things we're gonna be doing hell 360 videos of uh waverly yeah Yeah. gonna be great so. It's going to be great. So, yeah. So, let's dive on into these haunted restaurants. I would like to first give a shout out to Coley Luna. Um, this is their first time catching a live. Oh, nice. Oh, welcome. welcome. Yeah. Welcome aboard so, to the live stream. And the pair junkies made Coley feel extremely welcome. Aww. There are so many like, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, Aww, that's appreciate nice. that, y'all. Thanks for welcome, welcoming Coley in. All right. Um, yeah. Let's All go right. ahead and jump into it. So we're going to start out with the old pink house. My, the pink house. My favorite chicken pot pie in town. It's a mighty fine restaurant. It uh, is. It is where, it's where locals go for special occasions. So yes. you know it's good if the locals are, are braving the downtown. Yep. The downtown tourist scene right. to, um, to celebrate their, their, you know, 
uh, anniversaries and birthdays and things of that nature. But you do have to get there early for the chicken pot pie. Because yes, I've it, only, it will go away. It will go away <laughs> quickly uh, because it's very good. But mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but That's yeah. not that pecan basket dessert. Oh, uh, so yes. Good. That's good. And the chia wine barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. I like that on some uh-huh. pulled pork. Man, that's mm-hmm. It's good stuff. <laughs> It's good stuff. But yes. So uh, we're going to start out with the history of the Pink House. So the old Pink House in Savannah is a historic mansion with a rich history that spans over three centuries. Um, So construction and initial years, the house was built in 1771 for James Habersham Jr., one of Savannah's most prominent early cotton merchants and a notable figure in Georgia's early history. Despite its construction starting before the American Revolutionary War, the occupation by British forces during the war delayed its completion, as you can imagine. Um, and the house wasn't finished until 1789. The old pink house is re-owned, um, or renowned, excuse me, for its uh, beautiful Georgian architecture, which has been met- uh, meticulously preserved over the years. It's made of red bricks, which were originally covered with white plaster. Due to the humid Savannah climate, the red bricks bled through the plaster, giving the house its distinctive pink hue. It's almost like a Pepto-Bismol pink. But it really <laughs> it's, is. It's, it's true. In 1920, the house was painted pink to embrace the unique characteristic. Um, now, the Habersham family, uh, James Habersham Jr., as the original owner, um, he played a significant role in the early economy of Georgia, despite the co- uh, or especially in the cotton industry. Uh-huh. Despite his initial loyalty to the British crown, the Revolutionary War shifted the allegiances within the Habersham family with James Jr. and his brothers, eventually supporting the American cause. The Habersham family was deeply involved in the pol- political and economic development of Georgia, and James Habersham Jr. or Sr., the father, was a staunch British loyalist, which conflicted uh, with his son's revolutionary sentiments. James Jr., after whom the house is most closely associated, used his wealth to support the American Revolution, and the Habersham's contributions to Savannah and the state of Georgia are significant. The family members playing key roles in the state's early governance and the founding of the University of Georgia. So there you go. For L, there you go. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, the UGA um, student here. But yes, so uh, there is a bar down in the house that is said to have I'm hosted. showing it now. <laughs> yes, that is said to have hosted um, members of the revolution and things like that. So it's very deeply entrenched in the American Revolution history. Mm-hmm. Um, but onto the haunting side of things. The old pink house in Savannah, Georgia, is rich with stories of hauntings and ghostly encounters, reflecting its deep historical roots in the numerous lives that pass through its doors. One of the most famous ghostly residents is James Habersham Jr., the original owner, whose apparition is reportedly seen often, especially between October and March, to avoid the summer heat. <laughs> Fair enough. (laughs) That is fair. That is very fair. fair. Um, Despite the absence of historical evidence to support the claim, there are tales of Habersham Jr. hanging himself in the basement, now the planter's tavern, due to despair, uh, uh, despair over his wife's affair or her death. Yet he is buried in uh, consecrated ground at Colonial Park Cemetery, which some take as evidence against the suicide theory. Yeah, that's a... I, I believe that most people refute that story. Right. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's just one of those, why is he haunting the place? And and suicide is among the most like romantic notions of ghosts, mm-hmm. you know, um, that uh, they killed themselves and it was their despair and their sorrow of uh, that, you know, allows them to remain. And uh, and but I do think that <laughs> since there is no record of it. It seems like there would be. Right. You know, most people agree that there would be a record of it. Um, even even with a rich family who might have been trying to hide it, there would be more of a, well, a to-do. And you would see the symbolism in his grave Absolutely. if he did yeah, yeah. die from suicide. Because every other person who died from suicide in that time period in Savannah, you can tell from the art, art, yeah. the art on their graves. Um I mean, you look at Corinne Lawton um, over in Bonaventure. She is facing away from her family. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, She has literally no peoples, um, Mm. which does make her kind of frightening. Um, But 
that is an indicator of suicide. Uh, they won't carve pupils into the figure's eyes if you took your own life. And mm -hmm. so, um, I, I, and same with Matilda Sorrell, you know, mm -hmm. uh, her grave was buried very far away from the Sorrell family plot, uh, which is another indication of suicide because uh, you weren't allowed to be buried with your family if um, you did take your own life. And in a lot so, of instances, the tombstones will be facing away from the body rather than over the body. Exactly. Think, and those are small indications that they're trying to uphold the, the ritualistic side of, um, of not – Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledging suicide as a, um, a proper death. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, there's not a lot of evidence to it. And it very well could be it was his home. Yeah. And he just oh, no. liked it. You I mean, know? And, and given the type of, of activity that uh, Habersham is responsible the for. The debauchery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems like he was just a, a he, he loved the place. Yeah. He enjoys uh, his afterlife. Seemingly. Seemingly. <laughs> Seemingly. Um, his spirit is known for the meticulous neatness, oftening straightening table settings and chairs, and mysteriously lighting candles on tables throughout the restaurant. At least um, they should give him uh, some, some pay for that. Right. You yeah, know? Put a little tip jar out for, for James. Yes. Um, so the Old Pink House's history is intertwined with the Habersham family, noted for their significant influence in early Savannah and the Revolutionary War efforts against British rule. The house completed in 1789 after delays due to the British occupation. Um, it has witnessed a great deal of history, including the deaths of James Habersham Sr. and several enslaved individuals from diseases like yellow fever which is not uncommon with mm. every place in Savannah. Yellow fever, because we had so many outbreaks of it, there's pretty much every single notable spot in town had some touch of the disease in a, some form or manner. Um, but yes. Now, apart from James Habersham Jr., several other spirits are said to inhabit the house. A Revolutionary War veteran, perhaps Joseph Habersham, is known to ask visitors for a toast before vanishing. Another spirit, a female ghost, is often seen sobbing on the second floor. Um, the ghosts of former house servants and enslaved children who suffered and died in the house are also reported. And these children are known for playful and mischievous behavior, such as throwing dice or startling patient or patrons and staff. One particularly troublesome spirit is known for locking women in the bathroom, leading to the removal of the lock on the yep. door. Yeah. Um, so when I first started doing ghost tours, I would get probably once a month a report of some a woman who has had an experience in the pink house bathroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pink house bathroom, um, it, it also involves inappropriate touching. Yes. You know, not just being locked in. And even wow. with the lock removed, there were people who still couldn't get out of the women's bathroom. Right. Uh, which may be, you know, weird settling and, you know, yeah. something to that effect. Whoa. But, um, and most people go ahead and uh, ascribe that to Habersham. They, they yes. say that that's Habersham's ghost um, because he loves the bar and he loves the women. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it, it kind of comes across that way. So it's it's funny to think that that there is a... Well, we, we can't blame that on Habersham. He's been dead for 300 years. It's okay. It's or 200 okay. years. Yeah, we, 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 can, we can cast a little shade his way um, <laughs> because somebody's doing it and, uh, and he's the most likely culprit. Because even right. the, um, the fact that we started breaking the spirits up, you know, in my time telling ghost stories in Savannah, um, there was only Habersham, James Habersham yep. uh, haunting the building. He was the one at the bar requesting a toast he was the one in the vault uh because it used to be a bank at one yes. point so um one of the most exclusive rooms in the entire uh restaurant is a is is the vault you can actually it's a two person's table that you can sit in the vault and and have a very special occasion uh people have a lot of experiences there and they all think that for the longest time it was just james habersham but then then the woman crying came about and people were like yeah. We think that it was James Habersham and uh, somebody he abused, mm -hmm. but that there's no proof of that. There's no way to say, but the fact that it came about in such a late fashion made people wonder if it wasn't a more modern ghost. Mm. Right. You know, it, if it wasn't somebody, you know, in modern history who had passed and, and, you know, just despairingly is at the house. 
And then probably one of the spirits I hear the most often because the women's restroom is a hot spot mm -hmm. in this place. Oh, absolutely. Um, is Mrs. Haversham's spirit is also reported to reside in the house, showing a less friendly demeanor, especially towards women who invade her space, particularly in the restroom where she's been known to scare them away. And it's mostly if they are obscenely intoxicated um, right. because judgy, she, judgy pants. she was very staunchly for prohibition. Um, okay. And so that is a, which is, so she was no fun. She was no fun. And they put three bars in her house. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and, and yeah, there's a lot of stories about the, 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 the bars being a source of pain for her, uh, but a, a source of comfort for, for James. Yes. So, you know. Exactly. She was very for prohibition, and so she really hates when women come into the bathroom because if you're a woman, a, uh, an adult woman listening to the podcast, and you've ever been to a bar uh, when it starts to get later in the night, women's bathrooms are feral. Um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, pe people, women like to interact with each other in the women's restroom when they're a little uh, inebriated. And so... Um, Mrs. Habersham's having none of that. She's like, this is a classy establishment. This is my home. Get out. Um, and so she has literally been known to scare the crap out of women um, and run hmm. them out of the out of the room. And there was a time when that was also uh, ascribed to James Habersham, right? Like, scaring women out of the bathrooms um, because he's he, he's he's kind of a creep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in those stories, right. I, should, I should say that w what's happening is people will report events that were happening in the bathrooms, things that were happening in the bathrooms. And it, it, it became distilled as the story of, of James Havisham, who loves the ladies and loves the whiskey. And, you know, don't be caught in the bathroom. <laughs> so Elle is, uh, she turns 21 uh, next uh, week and she mm -hmm. is coming cheers. to yeah cheers. cheers she is coming to Savannah and she's most likely gonna go into the bathroom yes oh, good by all means <laughs> yes. to be haunted yes <laughs> go 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 haunt it up go haunt it up Savannah's a great place to turn twenty one you'll have uh, a great time and especially with all the festivities that are going on in this oh, yeah. town already oh um, yeah uh, next week is the slithering parade yep. isn't it yep. Slithering it, parade. Yes. Uh, it, it, the heck it, is that? It's a snake lantern it's a parade. It's a snake lantern parade to commemorate the, where the snakes went. Yes. You know, if 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 St. Patrick drove them out of Ireland, where did they go? They came right here. They came Savannah, right here. Georgia. But the snakes were the pagans. So the it's were the like, pagans. which is, oh, okay. it's funny. Um, okay. But yeah, they, they know they, what they're doing. They, they know, know what they're doing. doing. And, um, <laughs> But yeah, they uh, make these handmade snake lanterns. It's mm -hmm. very cool. Um, Big puppets, and they yeah. walk it yeah. down the street. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that'll be happening. Yeah, uh, already the month of March is just mm -hmm. green oh, in yeah. this town. Yeah, so. we are. We are. We are a. Uh, we're, we're all in for St. Patrick's. We're Day. all in. We're, that that is that is just the way it goes. We'll we'll, we'll be dedicating uh, an episode to to yes. Irish folklore and and yes, we are and uh, Irish tradition. Exactly. Um, but the last story with the pink house is probably my favorite ghost at the house, which is a ghost dog. <laughs> there is a ghost dog. Um, there is a ghost puppy. Uh, they don't really know where. It probably was a dog that the Habersham family owned or somebody at some point. At somebody at some point. Yeah, yeah. owned. Um, but a lot of people will be eating at the pink house, which is a nice restaurant. So it, it wouldn't be, you know, the type of restaurant where the owner brings their dog and lets them loose in the dining room. Um, you know. And so people will be eating at their big tables with their nice fancy tablecloths and they'll feel a dog licking their leg or sniffing them or they'll feel it brush past them. But it's really just James. <laughs> 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 He Crawl was a dog. <laughs> Crawling on the floor, <laughs> licking ladies' yeah. legs. <laughs> ah. Don't mind me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> But yes, and he so, does get a bum rap. Let me tell you something, yeah, boy. Because there's a good chance that it's not him at all. But they're like, I don't know, something don't just know. licked my calf. James, <laughs> jingles. That is a bum rap. But yes, yeah, so it's um, they have a ghost dog that wanders around through <laughs> yep. the dining room and licks people's legs, and then when they go to look, no dog to be seen. Mm -hmm. but I'm I've like, heard of reports of people thinking they saw the dog, like out of mm -hmm. the corner of their eyes, run past. Because the um, the pink house is set up in a house fashion, so you're like in different pocketed rooms, and so there's like doorways between the rooms, and people see a, a dog like going by, and they think that it's a you know service dog or something like that. But mm -hmm. why is it free? Why is it roaming around? Right. Yeah. 
So that's my favorite animal (laughs) or my favorite ghost in that house. But yes. And then moving on to the next one, we're going to Tondi's Tavern. Tondi's Tavern. But yes. So a little bit about the history of Tondi's Tavern. Um, It was, it it is enveloped in history and haunting tales. Uh, The current building is located at 7 East Bay Street and dates back to 1853 and was formerly the Central Georgia Railroad Bank. Uh, it played a significant role during the Civil War, serving as the city headquarters for General G- uh, Gary under Ger- uh, General Sherman's occupation. The upper floors housed the offices of Bryan and Sons, the largest trader of enslaved individuals on the East Coast during the 1850s, adding a dark chapter to its history. Yeah, that's a seriously dark chapter. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Um, So the tavern's namesake, Peter Tondi, was an early settler who played a pivotal role in the American Revolutionary War era, with his establishment serving as a gathering spot for patriots and soldiers. The Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty. The Sons of Liberty. And the Sons of Liberty were said to also, um, you know, party at (laughs) the the Pink House as well. But, um, yeah, we, honestly, you could probably do a Sons of Liberty pub crawl in this city. Yeah, yeah, because that's where they would meet. Yeah. You know, they would meet at tavern and pubs Mm -hmm. uh, because it was the acceptable place for men to gather Mm -hmm. you know and so it was it was not a um, it wasn't a bender it was just where can we where can we speak of our plans where can we speak freely uh, and uh, and that Tony's Tavern was actually over on Whitaker Street right Um, Hmm. it's kind of where Flock to the Walk and that pizza place oh K's yeah yeah used to be um, at least the and it was the cellar was right. was where they would meet. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Didn't know that. There's a lot of history in that cellar. There is. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of history in every cellar in yeah, this city, so practically. Yeah. Um, well, and that's just it because I think that Tondi's official was on Broughton and mm-hmm. Whitaker, and then the building behind it was where they would meet. Mm-hmm. Right. I think. That sounds right. It gets right. very shady. You know? It does. <laughs> like like when you try to track the the the, the stories and the history. Uh, a lot of it is 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 almost romanticized, so it becomes very difficult to right. to figure out what the um, what the facts were. But given the the clues that we have, it seems that the Sun Celebrities met in the cellar underneath um, the building behind the main building, which was on Broughton Street. Exactly. Um, so Tawny Tavern was a place where ideas of liberty and independence were fervently discussed, and it's said that Georgia's first government was formed there. After Peter's death in 1775, his wife Lucy continued to run the tavern until it was destroyed by fire in 1796. So modern-day Tondi's Tavern honors its historic roots while reportedly playing host to several spirits from its past. Paranormal activity is said to emanate from the basement where it's rumored enslaved people were held, which was not uncommon. Um, Right. And it's interesting because I think that a lot of people are mistaking holding slaves, uh, enslaved people in the basement for the man who sold slaves, thinking that he was keeping the slaves that he was selling in the basement. But the truth of the matter is, in many cases, people traveled with slaves and people went around with slaves. Mm -hmm. And when they did they would have a place for slaves to be corralled while they went about their business because you would not allow a slave to be in your personal you know sleeping area or things like that so where would they go and oftentimes the basement was the place that they would they would keep slaves so mm-hmm. it's an interesting thing because i think that um, a lot of people refute that slaves were kept in the basement and it's like well I don't think it's the way you're thinking it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think – because people want to immediately assume that it's the slave traders. Um, and it's bad enough that the actual slave pens were directly across the alley. Right. So you know, directly across the alley was where they kept slaves to be sold. And so there's, oh, and, yeah. And that's, like yeah. on Factors Walk. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, well, not even Factors Walk. This was the, the actual auction place in yeah. the square. But mm-hmm. I thought that so, – oh, really? Yeah. I th- so the, the, not the tunnels though. The tunnels that led straight through okay. would deposit the slaves Got into it. a pen Got it. that Got it. was uh, – I think there's like an antique store there now. But Jerry's? it's like right on – yeah, Johnson Square I think or just off of – is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. know exactly yeah. what you're yes. talking about. It's right on State Street. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, on State Street. That's it. And um, But yeah, so. Uh, Brian. It's Brian. Oh, Brian State. Brian. Yes, yeah. straight. Yeah. State's yeah. up. My bad. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's one street up from Bay. 
<laughs> but so, in any just case, Savannah podcast. Yeah. talking about Savannah. We, right. we find ourselves oftentimes uh, overlapping notions, and and it's very hard to peel them apart because we say slaves were kept in the basement, and and people are like, oh, well, there was a slave trader up the stairs, so it was his slaves that he was selling. It's like maybe not, and there's a good chance that <clears throat> that it didn't happen. It wasn't happening. But there's enough evidence to suggest that it did. Right. Uh-huh. And it, well, it was the same way with Moon River because right. exactly. um, because when it was a hotel, uh, they did the exact same thing right. where, you know, because the slaves were not allowed into the hotel. So they had to keep them down. In yeah, the basement. they weren't allowed on the second floor up. Right. So they could go into the lobby. But when people stayed in their rooms, the slaves were not allowed to wander around in where other people, you know, kept their valuables or things of that nature. Right. And slaves were considered their valuable. So they had a vault. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm I've always whenever I go on bay and I think it might be because it's you know partly because it's so loud on bay because of all those semis going right. by and it's and it's kind of like a tunnel yeah almost like a but I I hate going on bay and and it's it's not only because it's so loud it, it doesn't have very good energy it's kind of a darker street for me yeah and yeah, even and, with all the lights because there there are lots of street lights it it is dark now 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 hearing all this history about it I'm like I wonder if it just emanates just dark vibes absolutely like, oh yeah absolutely well it's literally uh, right in the middle of one of like Chris was saying the main slave trade mm-hmm. you can't avoid having yeah. that type of negative energy yeah that just, energy doesn't just dissipate yeah sure exactly and so um, yeah I completely agree I hate Bay Street um, but yeah. Bay Street has a dark 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 history we're not talking yeah. trash about Tondi's go to Tondi's oh yeah cool, go to Tondi's but yeah Tondi's is great and they have really good cheesecake mm. and they serve it in like a mason jar Mm. Yeah, um, jar of cake, jar of cake. Yeah, go eat jar. jar of cake. Go eat cheesecake, but yeah, <laughs> go eat cheesecake. And, but, you know, uh, I think there's several ghost tours that go into Charlie's sure. Tavern. So yes, you know. there. I think there's a um, there is like a pub crawl tour that goes in there, but yeah, don't quote me on that. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I last I heard there was mm-hmm. it, it, in recent memory. It seems like there is. Yeah, um, but yes. Yeah, so. Uh, Basically, the nonetheless, the area around the tavern, including Bay Lane, uh, was known for its pens, like Chris was saying, used to hold enslaved individuals. Um, now, one haunting a- account involves a fire in the tavern, um, after which employees reviewed security footage to find orbs and flashes of light captured on camera, suggesting the supernatural presence. It's speculated that the spirits of the tavern were attempting to alert the employees to the danger. Um, now the two main spirits, which here's, uh, before we even get into the story, something about Savannah that all of you must be oppressed of is that sometimes the same story gets attributed to, to multiple locations, to multiple locations. Absolutely. and that, that is, is definitely true. the case with this one. So just bear that in mind when I'm telling you this story, because it might bring a couple bells in your mind. Yes. And technically it's more likely at this location than the other location. <laughs> right. Um, so the spirits of Anna and Thaddeus are among the reported... Go- Thaddeus. 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 Which One is name. an excellent name. Yes. Thaddeus. If you play D&D, Thaddeus, good name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah. Very good name. Yeah. yeah. Um, are among the reported ghostly inhabitants of Tondi's Tavern, a place steeped in history and paranormal intrigue. Um, while the detailed histories of these spirits are not fully documented in the sources, um, their stories contribute to the rich tapestry of ghost lore associated with the tavern. Um, so Anna is described as a young woman from the 1800s, arranged to be married but deeply in love with a sailor. Legend has it that she either leapt to her death from a third floor window or was pushed by her spurned fiance, leading to her tragic demise. This story, like many ghost tales, is shrouded in mystery and sadness, reflecting the emotional turmoil that often accompanies such hauntings. Thaddeus, on the other hand, is reported as a young boy whose presence is sometimes felt on the ground floor and in the tavern area. The details of his life and how he came to be a part of the tavern spectral assembly are not specified, but his youthful spirit adds a different layer to the haunting narrative of the location. Uh, These spirits, along with an unnamed, less friendly entity known for disturbing the kitchen staff by throwing objects around, contributed to the eerie ambiance of Tondi's Tavern. 
Now, each ghostly resident has its own story, potentially tied to the tavern's long and varied history from its origins in the Revolutionary War period to its use during the Civil War and beyond. Um, so, yeah. So, if you listen to any of our previous Savannah episodes, two of those stories in particular might sound very familiar to another location, which we won't name. But it's... Um, well, and the things to remember is that ghost stories tend to... Um, to be about filling in the blanks anyway. Right. You find yourself filling the blanks. If you if you experience something, you're like, what is that? And what could it be? And then there are there are plenty of stories that that fall in because really the throwing yourself to your death story, the only one that we have any verification of is Matilda. Yeah. You know, it that's the only happen. one that that there's actual, you know, uh, uh, an indication that it actually happened. That one event might very well be the story of every other one, people just absorbing that knowledge because very few buildings in Savannah are high enough to, to, to kill you if you jump from right in, in the case of, of one of them, your chances of killing yourself are so low (laughs) that you have to kind of like land on your face and then your butt. Yep. Like, you know, you, 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 that's your only hope is that you break your neck right. hitting the ground. Otherwise, you're just going to break Otherwise a, a limb you, you, or something. And you might not even do that because it's not that at all. No buildings yeah. are particularly tall in Savannah, Georgia. So, you know, um, the ideas of throwing yourself to your death, romanticized as they are, uh, I can think of like four stories about people throwing themselves to their death. And it's like that isn't as common as you'd think. Uh, of course, in modern day, as a matter of fact, just a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. someone threw themselves off a, a parking garage. Yes, and died. Again, that wait again? Yeah, yeah, you didn't hear about it. It was no. a boy who had um, like testified against his father in a um, um, abuse case, mm-hmm. and, Lord, and then threw himself off of the um, the State Street garage. Apparently. Mm, that's yeah. the one. Oh, that's yeah. why, the one. Why that's that yeah. is so, no, so, no, that's the same one. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is no. sorry, this is blowing my mind, y'all, because it's not the first time that it's happened at that oh, particular yeah. no, part no, no, of the no, garage. It's not. So it's like um, because uh, there was that SCAD student mm-hmm. maybe a decade ago that was the same place, same, yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, but anyways, sorry. we are off on a tangent. <laughs> But yeah, so um, yeah, my big thing is like, why the when they're like a woman threw herself to her death from her heartbreak? Why does she always have to be Anna? Anna, yeah, uh, and it's it's weird because Anna it just sounds like a ghostly name. It does. Um, and uh, the Anna that we tracked down, uh, the namesake of one of the ghosts, turns out to not have that story at all. Mm. You know, um, very strong, independent woman who did not die of, mm-hmm. of any uh, such injury. Uh, and then it's like, well, then where is that story from? Right. And, you know, one of the big indicators of the story was the quote unquote watching the river. The further away you get from the river, the less likely you are watching it from certain viewpoints, <laughs> from certain vantage points. Mm-hmm. So when you hear that, uh, her her lover was a sailor who went to sea and she spent her time on the roof watching the river. Um, there's only a, so many places you can see the river because of the way the real estate of Savannah works. Right. Hmm. You know, if you're a few blocks in, you're not standing on a building looking at the river. Hmm. You know, you're a few, few blocks in, you're looking at other buildings. You're, yeah. You, know, yeah. You're, you're, you don't have a clean shot. Exactly. Um, so... Nonetheless, though, uh, definitely check out Tawny's Tavern um, because you never know what uh, kind of debauchery you might get into with all the, r- r- the soldier spirits and whatnot. But Right. And uh, that's just it. You know, Savannah's kind of a ground zero for, for, for hauntings. And so while we place labels on them, give them names, you know, try to explain who they are, none of that matters when it comes down to it because the ghosts, they're doing their thing. Oh, they, exactly. they have their own... Uh, uh, their own pattern of behavior and you can witness it and you can be a part of it. Um, the obsession we have with naming them right. and, and, and making sense of them. I'll go on record and saying most ghost stories don't make sense. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't, you can never know the details of so many ghost stories because not everybody is going to have a Wikipedia page. Not everybody yep. is right. going to be of such note that they tell their stories. 
you know, so many people die absolutely anonymously and they don't have some tragic story where they were murdered or yeah, where, yeah. you know, they were, they were criminal masterminds or anything like that. They were just people who died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and that's enough. You know, uh, we, we, we come to this, this, this weird agreement that it has to be significant. You know, there has to be a significance to their life to create the haunting. It's like, no, they just didn't want to be dead. Right. And now they are haunting a place. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of ghosts are not looking for vengeance or, or heartbroken mm-hmm. or, you know, we, we, we just like that. We like the way those stories sound. We like the way those stories ring in our, in our heads. True. But the truth of the matter is, you know, hopefully each of you out there have very few people in your life who have been brutally murdered. You know, you have very few people in your life who uh, were serial killers or, you know, things of that nature. Um, Just imagine that it's a very small population of the universe that that get murdered or or, or go through this this thing. It's a very rare occasion. So a lot of a lot of dead people are just dead, you know, and and they're around. And a good point to lead us into the next one is not all um, haunted places have. Lots of resources on, <laughs> on uh, their hauntings. There are lots of places that it is you have to talk to people yeah. <laughs> to yes. find out um, about. As a matter of fact, this story uh, I only know by talking to um, uh, the daughter of a former owner of, hmm. of, of this establishment. So we're going to talk about Sixpence Pub. Um, Sixpence. We love Sixpence. Um, I love Sixpence. They have a great beer selection. They do. They have an excellent beer selection. The best French onion soup in yeah. downtown Savannah. I it's love so their French good. onion soup. Very and, good. Well, mm-hmm. and it's, I personally love going to this place, especially when it starts to get cold outside oh, yeah. because it feels like a cozy, very cozy. UK very cozy. pub. Um, cozy. And there's a reason for that. Um, <laughs> so, <true. laughs> because they quite literally brought a UK pub to Savannah. Beam by beam. Beam by beam. They literally brought it piece by piece to assemble this bar in Savannah. And you'll know it because they have one of those red telephone booths from mm-hmm. uh, the UK that they had brought over as well. Yep. I'm exactly. about to show it. Yeah, it's great. Um, and so because they transplanted another place, there's still a lot of energy that's probably attached to that pub from the UK, interestingly enough. Yes. Um, and they don't really talk about this a lot. They don't like boast about how they created this pub. No. It really came down to, I heard that just from talking to an employee. Yeah, there, well, but- it's it's an interesting story, but I think the original owners had sold it like right. 30 years ago. So, you know, the, that story was very interesting when they were around. Right. But, you know, with the new management, they, they do tell it, but it's not a it's not the, the the crowning achievement of the place. The crowning achievement of the place is their French onion soup. Yes. <laughs> they also but, make a mean pecan pie. Yes, they do. Um, but, yes, yeah, so there are some hauntings that are associated with Sixpence that people believe are, you know, attached to the bar mm-hmm. um, or the pub in general because they often see – spirits of people sitting at the bar that are not supposed to be there. Very specifically, they see a gentleman sitting at the bar. And um, when I was doing my ghost tours, um, I would regularly get report of seeing the man at the bar. And I would say, you know, there's a good chance that it's just a man sitting at the bar. (laughs) You know, just because it's after hours doesn't mean that one of the employees, the owner or somebody isn't just sitting at the bar having a drink. Or, you know, it could just be somebody. You know, it doesn't have to be a ghost. Um, only to hear from uh, the daughter of the uh, um, of one of the original owners. His name was Larry, and um, and I didn't speak to uh, her directly. It, this was just the story that was passed on to me. Was that um, when people started seeing this ghost, it turned out it's a relatively re- uh, new ghost. It was you know kind of um, a a, uh, a recent development. Um, her father passed away. Uh, very suddenly when he was 50 years old Mm. and he was partner owner of the bar and they uh, talked about it, but they had never, they hadn't gone back to it, Mm -hmm. but people started saying that they see this man at the bar. Well, she and her brother, Larry Jr. uh, went to the bar and uh, determined that it was indeed their father who sits at the bar 
they they went ahead and said, yes, my, my father haunts this establishment. He loved no this way. bar. He loved this place. That's so cool. So the ghost mm-hmm. of the Sixpence Pub, apparently, his name is Larry, and he was one of the original owners who brought over from the UK and now, uh, now he just hangs out there in his in his retirement. Yes, that's really cool. Which is not an uncommon story when it comes to pubs and and labors bars. of love. Yes, when you think about hundred percent the uh, how yeah cars and, and and things where people rebuild or they 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 invest all this time and energy and love into a into a place. Uh, it's that that question is like, are they going to haunt their you know cubicle? That they worked at, or they're going to haunt this place where they had all these great memories and all these great, you know, uh, uh, experiences. Um, so, yeah, uh, the Sixpence Pub apparently uh, is haunted by a ghost named Larry. So, uh, Larry, yes. raise a toast to him if you ever get to the Sixpence Pub. Yes, get a 20 ounce layered beer and have a drink for Larry because I'm sure he would love that. Um, but, yeah, it's a. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we even kind of talked about that when we were discussing um, the Ear Inn in New York. Yep. Um, there's That's their resident ghost is a guy who just loved being oh, yeah. at that bar. Right, right, right. So much that he's like, well, I died here and I'm going to I'm going to stay here for the rest of eternity. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Well, and know? bars and taverns and pubs were so much a part of a person's identity for the longest time because pubs were the neighborhood hangout. That is where you mm-hmm. went to to meet with your friends, to exchange the stories of the week to uh, or of the day because um, it used to be a daily outing. You know, mm-hmm. you, 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 you get off work or you get off whatever you're doing and you head over to the pub and you and you sit with your friends and you, you know, drink a pint and, and, and Just enjoy tell yourself. yarns. And enjoy yourself, living your life. That's... If that's where you're living, mm-hmm. that's where you're more likely to haunt. Um, where you make a living, not necessarily, because you're not really living at your work. Now, and, and I mean, broadly speaking, there are plenty of people who love okay. their job and love what they're doing, and mm-hmm. and 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 are, are are working, you know, because that's their field of chosen, you know, profession. But a lot of people don't. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people are working for that paycheck. And then they take that paycheck and they invest it in doing things that they really want to do. Exactly. That's why I imagine Disney World is really, really haunted. It is. Because when you think about all the people who focus their savings Mm -hmm. on going to Disney World, I know so many people who regularly go to Disney World. It is their happy place. Mm -hmm. It is a place that that they identify as the magic place, the Mm -hmm. place that brings them the most joy. So I think that places like that are probably woefully haunted, but- Haunted by satisfied ghosts, mm-hmm. by ghosts who who are there to oh, yeah. support, and 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 they're full of love of the place, so they're not out there going boogity boogity. They're like, Wee! <laughs> yeah. If you haven't listened to that story way back when, when I talked about the uh, little boy ghost that haunts the haunted mansion, go back and listen to that because that's a fun time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. Hopefully, you'll go check out some of these restaurants next time you're here in Savannah. And if you want to hear more about haunted restaurants in Savannah, we can talk about a lot of different ones because um, this is literally just like a small scraping from the top of all of them. Um, Every so, once in a while, we'll just come right back to Savannah and do it in Savannah. Oh, yeah. sure. Absolutely. Exactly. So, um, yes, thank you guys so much. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And stay spooky, y'all.